Hiya guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench. Welcome back to the channel. So, I've got a, view, a review video for you today, and I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. This is the second time I filmed this. I filmed it once already. I set my PC up to upload the video to YouTube and everything, and then it all failed. And then when I went back to get it, I realised I'd stupidly deleted it before I knew it actually got up onto YouTube. So, I've made this video once, so now I'm doing it again. If you remember, a couple of weeks ago I went to a show, uh, not a couple of weeks ago, it was just over a week ago, went to the show down in Thornbury and I bought this. And this is the beautiful Airfix 172nd scale Victor B Mark II. Uh, this is the non-tanker version. And um, I was really, really chuffed to get this for £40, which in this day and age is a bargain price. And um, also chuffed to see that this is actually the British one. And it says down here, you can see, I hadn't noticed this before, but James Mower pointed out, you can see down here it says, designed and manufactured in the UK. Um, if you're not a, 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 a follower of Airfix, you will know that many, many, um, well, you, sorry, you won't know that many of their kits now were moulded in India. And they have a lighter grey, sort of softer plastic, and tend to be sort of riddled with sink marks. Um, if you look back at my Vulcan review and you look at some other people's builds, and certainly read some of the comments during in my Vulcan build, you'll see in there that there's been some uh, pretty serious issues. So this is actually the Airfix kit manufactured in the UK. The plastic is harder, it's darker, and according to an interview I heard about, I won't mention any names, but I heard someone talk about it. And apparently Airfix don't mould in the UK and use this plastic because modellers apparently don't like it. But when we look in this box in a minute and you see what's in here, you tell me if you don't like it. So, first of all, just a quick bit of history about what we've got here. For years, all we had was this. Okay, now this is the Dusty. <laughs> this is the Dusty Revell. Um, Handy Page Victor K Mark II. So this is the tanker version, and as you can see, it's got the wing tanks on here, and it's got the uh, the boom coming out of the bottom here. So very very simple kit. It's actually raised panel lines and everything, and it's actually made originally by Matchbox. This kit here. So. Uh, there has been a review of this kit done recently and a comparison of this and the Airfix. I'm not here to do a comparison of this and the Airfix, but I'm just going to show you the one that Peter had was actually a Chinese copy because if you are going to buy one of these kits, these are the instructions you're going to get if it's a UK genuine kit. So what Peter had was, was not the genuine item. So it is covered in English writing. We've got English, French, French, German, Italian, Spanish and the Netherlands. So... You know, there's all the languages you could want on there, except for Chinese. So, um, there you go. So that's you know, basically what you get. And it's a fairly simple kit. You've got all your colour callouts here. Um, and it's all of those, again, are in all the different languages. Oh, we have got... Um, that's Chinese or Japanese. Excuse my ignorance. But uh, we have got some there. So, basically, um, that is the kit that you get. And then you get these this large decal sheet which is very nice indeed, and you get all the colour call-outs here, all nice, it looks like it's almost full size. Um, so there you go, you've got that all there in your decal placements as well. So when you when you get one of these kits, if you are tempted by one of these, or the Revell version, um, that's sort of what you get. You can see with the Matchbox you get multi-coloured plastic, um, but we have got some pretty serious, I mean, very serious sink marks on there. Um, as you can see, it's all raised panel lines. Actually, I will have a quick look to see if the Revell kit also has those sink marks, because then that might tempt you. If you can't afford the hundred odd pound that people are asking for the Airfix these days, you might want to get this one instead. So if we look at this one, uh, we can see, yep, yeah, we've got the same. We've got sink marks in there. I don't know if the camera's catching it, but there's there's a massive sink mark between those engines. Uh, and the same on that side, well, that side's even worse, you can see there. So it's going to need some work. If you're rescribing it, it won't be a problem, but if you want to just leave the panel detail as it is, it's going to look bloody awful. But as you can see, very, very simple, race panel lines. Um, you know, not really very nice at all. As far as detail sets go, you can get all sorts for the Airfix. 
But the one I have for the for the Revell Matchbox kit is this one here, which is the Flight Path um, Andy Page Victor set. And in here you've got resin parts to replace the intakes. And you can see they've scribed the detail on here. So if you use this without rescribing your kit, it's going to look a bit odd. But you've got all the intake detail in there, which is cast in resin. So you cut a section out of the wind and just glue that in. Um, you've got two of those there. We've also got some white metal parts there. Some little white metal parts in there to improve the kit. And then you've got a sheet of photo etch, which includes, as usual with flight path, you've got window framing and everything that's actually glued in there, so I'm not going to take it out. But you can see there we've got wheel details and window framing, all sorts of bits and pieces in there. Okay. So, and then we've got the quite simple one sheet instructions there, which is just some added detail for your um for your bits and pieces you've got all sorts of detail there for the undercarriage you can see so nice little set um you know flight path is is a sort of cottage industry i believe like a, a one-man band and we've got these uh this set here as well these instructions and this is showing you where to where to cut your wing to fit those resin intakes so that's everything there for the matchbox slash revel so let's have a look at this airfix kit which is lovely and so now we move on to this beauty. This is the latest incarnation of the Victor from Airfix. It's a British kit, as I said, uh, and I think it was 2016. I think it was, yeah, 2016 this one was made. So a quick look round the box. It's a massive box and very glossy. You can see we've got some CAD images there. Sometimes better to see the real thing rather than CAD images because, you know, if there are shrink marks and horrible bits and pieces, then it won't show up on CAD. Some health and safety stuff there in all the different languages. And then we've got the, the kit number there, which is A A12008 Handy Page Victor B Mark II BS. So there we are. Um, always worth looking for that one as well. Airfix are always very, very quiet about it. <laughs> Cartograph decals, you think they'd be more of a fuss than a sort of six by three millimeter badge on the corner of the box. End of the box is basically just the same as the side. And then typical Airfix, you've got the upside down bit on this side. And these are the two versions you get out of the box. I've actually got aftermarket decals for this one. Um, although they're probably going to be for the tanker. So I'm probably going to have to get some more or go with these schemes. But I would do that one anyway. I wouldn't go with the white. So there we are. So this one's... Um, I think only buildable with the blue steel, although I'm not sure. Now, as I say, I've done this before. Here's my aftermarket decals. Um, oh yeah, these, this is for blue steel, so that's okay. So that's the tanker, and these two are blue steel, so I have got aftermarket decals for 12 RAF victors. So there we go. Cover that in another video. Right, so normally I would talk now about packaging and stuff. I'm not going to talk about packaging because I've bought this kit secondhand, plus I've already had it all open once, so... I think this all comes in one bag with this bag of sprues bagged individually inside that bag and then this bag of clear individually bagged inside that bag. So still all in one bag, still all rattling around with each other. But this has got bubble wrap around it. Whether this is what the previous owner did or Airfix did, I do not know. But basically we've got a bag of smaller sprues there. We've got our larger sprues here. You can instantly see this plastic is much darker than the normal sort of um, soft grey blue tack stuff, which is what Peter calls it. And um, you can see here we've got a couple of large sprues. We've got our Bombay and Bombay doors there, so we can do a standard bomber by the look of it. And then we've got um, wings and everything here. So instruction book and here, a nice big book, typical Airfix style. So let's have a look and see what we're getting in here. So I'll bring you in, I'll bring you in, not out, there we go. I'd love to know what's going on with this camera, I've got a Sony ZV-1 and I've got this remote control thing, which you tripod, and sometimes I press the zoom and it's like, Vroom! and other times it's really, really slow like it was just then, so I don't really know what's going on, I'm not changing any settings or anything. Anyway, um, so typical sort of A4 size, Airfix instructions, we've got decals in here, we'll get those out. Um, and we've also got our colour callouts in here, so we'll pull them out as well. Um, and typical sort of just white plain paper, no glossy paper, thank you. Uh, and all the different languages going down here. So all specifications about the rear aircraft. Um, 
parts should be ruthless through washed in warm soapy water rinse and dry thoroughly something always worth remembering a lot of people don't bother I generally do um, some parts in the kit may not be required to build the model specified so that normally tells you there's another version coming along which it did the K2 came around so here we've got again we've got our assembly instructions this is all just basic advice for newer modelers you know about studying it and read the book and familiarize yourself before you start the build which is what I should have done with the Vulcan and then I wouldn't have made the couple of mistakes I did um, assembly icons down here so it's showing you like here you've got this um, this black triangle that's the assembly phase so that that is telling you that that is part assembly phase five here and then you've got four there and then you've got one here so basically going in we'll start with the cockpit you're not going to see any of this after it's done but it's nice to build it and paint it anyway so we've got the seats going in there pilot and co-pilot seats and then we've got the rear seats going in here um well that's the um officer set. i can't remember what it's called now that's the jump seat isn't it so we've got the the um, two pilot seats in here, we'll have the jump seat in there and then we'll have the three seats for the radio and the nav guys at the back. Um, and then we've got some lovely detail going in here. You didn't get this in the Vulcan, but it looks like we've got that, that um, panel on there for the radio gear and everything. And then we've got the side panel going in, looks like rudder pedals going in, you're not going to see them at all. You've got the seats going in here in the jump seat and then you've got the two pilot seats going in. So you've got a fully detailed cockpit there. Uh, and then we're going to start adding detail underneath for the wheel bay. So this is going to be the, the lower floor. We've got the wheel bay going in there. Rear of the wheel bay by the look of it. We're fixing part of the gear. And it looks like we have to fit our undercarriage uh, leg in here at the beginning. So it might be worth seeing if we could cut something about and change it around. So you don't have to put it in there and then. Because um, you don't want that sticking out of the model all the time you're building it. Um, perhaps we're looking at some other builds to see what other people have done. So then we're going to add this bulkhead to the, uh, to the landing gear. And then we're straight on with the tailplane. <laughs> so we're driving around all over the place here. So we've got the tailplane here. So it's telling us to cut bits off and file bits off for certain versions. Uh, it looks like we're going to cut them off for, for this version anyway. So there are obviously any lights for the fuel tanker. Uh, and then file down those lumps on there. So cut that off, file down the lumps. And then you see you end up with a smooth surface like this. Drill a one millimeter hole in there. Put the upper and lower halves together. And then you've got your separate flaps there going on. Separate um, elevator, sorry, going on. So it looks like... They're not positionable, they're just good. they've got pins there to locate them. I suppose you could put a brass rod through there and have them positionable if you wanted to. And then we're into the main undercarriage, so again, darting around all over the place. So we're building up our main wheels, putting our legs together, and then it's the same as the Vulcan, it's got the separate piece going on the top, which makes for better detail. And then we've got these little actuators going in the side, adding the wheels on, and then that's the undercarriage taken care of. As usual with all these modern Airfix kits now, which is a really nice touch, they've got these huge spars inside the wings. You've got this huge spar section here, which is going to be a big box section. You can see it there. And then this huge spar section going in there, which is going to sit in top of the fuselage. So your, your upper wing is in one piece, or in the upper wing centre section is in one piece. Then you've got your intakes here you're going to be adding. So they're telling you to paint all this in here. So you're adding your intakes as part of that spar. And then you're going to build all that together. So what you might want to do for ease of assembly is, if you can, is glue these two parts, A2 and A3, onto B1. Okay, so you can hold it in your hand and work on it and sand out all the, the divots and everything, rather than have to hold a great big wing assembly. And then add that in and then you can work around the outside edge. But if there's anything like the Vulcan, the fit will be perfect and you won't need to do a lot of work at all. Um, so you've got the uh, compressor bays, the, the stators and first stage compressors going in there. So remember to paint those and paint the intakes before you put them in. Um, and then we've got a separate side panel here for the intake. So again, you're going to have this gaping great hole. I would suggest, if it's possible, glue these two parts to that part. Glue those two parts in there to the sides. Do all your sanding. Get it all painted white and everything. Get it fitted to the wing. Then fit your compressor stator blades and then carry on from there. You've got all this going in as well. You're going to have lots of filler and seam work. I'm guessing we could do all this with it still off of the model complete. I don't know. We'll have to have a look. I will be building this anyway. Um, parts of the main gear going in here. Main gear bay, I should I say. And there's one of the parts of the spar structure for the, uh, for the main gear. Uh, and then again on the other side. Then we're going to build up our exhaust. We've got the turbines going in the back there. We've got exhaust coming out the back here. That's all just going to be black up in there. You're not going to see any of it. And then you're adding the outer wings to the, is that the outer lower? That's the outer upper wing to the um, to the centre wing section. Then you're adding the outer lower wing and then you're doing the same for the starboard side there. 
Okay, and then we're going <laughs> to we're darting around again. We're going to put the main landing gear then, the front landing gear, should I say, sorry, into the actual uh, fuselage half. We're going to paint the inside the fuselage, add some clear parts, add in our bomb bay. There, we've got the bomb bay bulkheads here. And then now we're on the air brakes. So we've got air brakes open, build 56 to 62A. So that's there to there. And for air brakes closed, miss out 50, and refer to 52B. So you're going to, if you have them closed, miss out that and go straight to here. If you're going to have them open, do all that. And they will look lovely when they're open. Add in the cockpit in there. It's going to be nice. It's going to look lovely until you put the glazing on and you won't see any of it. But remember, if you, like if you've got bright yellow headrests or you know, bright red headdress like you have in a B-52. Even if you have got limited view, if you're putting your model on show, people are going to look in there and see what's in there. And if you've got the bright red headdress, they will see them. So make sure if you've got your blues and yellows and all that, make sure you get it all painted so they can see it when you look through, especially with, with this, because the viewer is going to be able to look straight down in, because the, the, the screen is nearly vertical, uh, horizontal. Um, same on the other side now, we're going to add the glazing, paint the inside the cockpit, add the glazing into that door. We're going to drill a one mil hole in here. And then we're going to put our fuselage halves together, um, which is a nice touch, it's going to look lovely. And then you've got this bloody great big spar here, which is going to slot into the top of the wing, and hopefully we'll get a really nice fit around those seam lines. They tell you to do some cutting and chopping here in this, um, oh, this is the um, upper spar section, so you're going to have no seam to deal with along the main length of the fuselage, but you are going to have this joint around there. So Mr. Surfacer, cotton bud, job done. Beautiful V-shaped big tailplane going on there. And then we've got the intake ends there, so a bit more filling to do and get them all nice. Hopefully they'll fit nicely. Nice uh, touch here. They've got clear wing tips, which go onto the last section of the wing. Well, this is the actually the aileron. Um, so you can paint this here, red, green, whatever colour you're going to do it. And then you can mask that off and then paint the rest of the wing. And you're going to have what's looking like a proper clear light without all the glue around it and everything. So that's going to be really nice. And you can see that going in there. And then you're adding those into the wing tips, finishing off your air brakes if they're open or just gluing the doors on if they're closed, building up whichever tail cone you're going to use and adding that. Then we're going to add in the lower, uh, lower intersections of the wings. So that's that all going to be filled up. Don't forget, we've got to draw some holes in here and we've got a piece we've got to add in there. Undercarriage doors going on, undercarriage going in, uh, FOD uh, protector on the front. Then we've got the exhaust cones going in here. I'm off the camera, sorry. Exhaust cones going in here. And then we've got the actual console here with the um, control sticks going here, or the control wheels going on there. Drop that down into the top of the fuselage. Um, and then add in these scoops. Lots of scoops and bits and pieces going in. Got the bomb aimers glazing there. And then we've got the flaps, which are actually shaped around the engine exhaust. They're lovely looking things. You can have them deployed or up. They look nice deployed. And then we've got some more flat work going on there. We've got fuel tanks, external tanks here. Um, and you're going to have to cut the ends of these where the fairings go for the flaps, whether they be up or down. And then you're going to add the bit in here for your blue steel missile, or you're going to have a normal bomb load out, whatever you want to build from this model. Um, but if you're going to go normal bomb load out, you'll have to go after market for that. Uh, and then we've got these tanks going on here. Fairings, are they tanks or fairings? I'm not sure. Um, and then we've got a big intake here being assembled, another one here. And then we've got more bits and pieces and intakes all deployed on the fuselage here, which is going to look lovely. Little bits, a little cone going on there, adding your glazing, adding a refueling probe and some pitot tubes and stuff. That's windscreen wipers there, sorry. And then building up the blue steel missile, adding the blue steel missile, adding the door in the open position or in the closed position, I'm guessing. They're not giving you an option to have it closed by the look of it, but you can probably just have it closed. So there we go, we've got the ladder as well, which is going to look nice. So now we are, that's, the, that's basically the build. So looking like a lovely model so far, especially compared to the older ones we've got. So we've got our colour call-outs here. This is the Handy Page Victor from Wittering, 1968. Uh, again, this is the blue steel one. And then you've got the all-white one, which is again in Wittering, 1963 to 64. So that was 139 Squadron, and this is the Victor training flight. So if you want to build an actual squadron aircraft, you've got this one here with the low vis on it. And then you've got this one here with the single high vis. So that would go nice with your Vulcan if you've done it like I've done mine. So there we go, that's the uh, call out and the decal call out. And then here you've got your stencil call outs. Because we do love our stencils, don't we guys? Come on. There we go. Right, so we've got the version A. So this is the camouflage version. So you've got all your stencils all on the underside, all on the upper side there. Stencils for the blue steel, stencils for the sides, 
stencils, stencils everywhere. And then the same again, this is for the all white version. That there will be different stencils on them. Some will be blue, some will be red. So there we are. And then the decal sheet looks very, very nice indeed. Um, you've got your low vis here. This is going to be the common one. So you've got your instrument panels and everything here. And you've got your door markings there. These are cartographs, so they're going to be absolutely lovely. You've got your walkways and everything here on the wings. This is all for the 139 squadron. And this is for the training flight. So this is going to be the all white one. And this is going to be a camouflaged one. So um, you can see they have got totally different stencils. So there's no common stencils other than those three there. Let's give you a quick look around that close up. You can see it's lovely all in register. Nice and clean and really, really nice indeed. So very thin, not glossy, not shiny. Lots of carrier film on the XR189 there, but being cartographed, as long as you get a good coat of gloss under them, you'll be fine. So there we go. So they look absolutely gorgeous. So I'm going to put them away so they don't get damaged. We'll slot them inside there like that. And then we'll slot that one inside there like that. And then we'll slot this one inside the book. I'm taking care of this model, guys, because it's a collector's piece now. No doubt it will come back, um, but I think when it comes back, it will probably be moulded in the blue tack plastic in India. So that's why we're so keen on getting one of these now. So here we go. So we'll look at the first. I'll tell you what, we'll look at the fuselage first. Look at the fuselage halves. So we've got two sprues here with our fuselage halves on. A lot of you have already seen this, I expect. But um, really, really lovely to see this nice... You can hear it's a lot harder. It's, it's a much harder plastic. It's lovely. Uh, it's very nice indeed. And when you look at the, the surface detail on the fuselage there, you can see how clean and crisp it is. And you can see that it's, it's harder plastic. You can see by the crispness of everything. Come on camera, focus. It, does, it doesn't know what to focus on, that's the trouble. So you can see there, it's, it's really, really nice. Very nice indeed. And you can see there's no sink marks or anything. Now, you've got all these ribs on the inside here. Uh, you've got this line around here. You've got these ribs down here at the end. And normally you would probably see sink marks behind them with air fix, but there's nothing. Okay, there's a very slight trace of something there, I think. I don't know if you can catch that in the light, but um, that's going to be hidden by the wing anyway. But no, it's, it's, it's lovely. Very, very crisp. Very, very sharp. Very, very clean. If I worked for Airfix, the first thing I would do is get them to change to this plastic and this injection moulding company. Like that. So much better than the uh, than the, the Vulcan. And then we've got our cockpit floor here. We've got some bulkheads here for the Bombay, I think. I think that's Bombay. It might be um, the front wheel bay, but I think it's Bombay. And we've got our intakes there, and you can see we've got all sorts of detail inside those intakes as well. So um, they're going to look very, very busy. There's our tailplanes there. That lovely V section on them. Very, very uh, distinct V on them. So let's go into this bag here. So we've got two sprues in this bag. There's no loose parts in there. So we've got um so we've got here we've got our wings, which look lovely, very, very crisp. I'll give you a close-up now. A few scratches on them where they've been in the bags together. But there's nothing to you know, worry about, but the primer is going to cover that. We have got some sink marks around the back of here, but they appear to be very, very shallow. Uh, and then we've got, I think, there are fuel tanks on there, and then these pods here. So um, all very nice, but you look how crisp, how crisp the detail is, and the rivet detail and everything. And you can see there around that, um, the cutout for the ailerons, you can see we've got the, the shrinkage there, but it's not... It looks worse than it is, I think. It's, it's not as deep as it was on the Vulcan. Um, but you can see there, all crisp and clean and lovely. Very, very nice indeed. Very nice. And then this sprue here, this is going to be our wing main centre section. So I'm hoping that's going to fit nicely on the fuselage. And you've got these huge solid spars here. Um, and then we've got the underside centre sections. All the lovely panel detail on them. We've got our door there, and then this is our ailerons and the upper or lower half, whatever it is, of the uh, of the wing tips. So, and then we add that clear part on there. So uh, again, you can see all that lovely surface detail on there. When it's given a wash, it's going to look lovely. 
So again, have we got some? Yeah, we've got some slight sinkage on the back there. It's where you've got this this thick section of plastic here. Okay, and as it cools, it shrinks. So you need to keep it in the tool longer, stop it shrinking, but um, or slow down the cooling process basically. Unless they're using cold tools, I don't know. But um, anyway, there you go. So that's the that's the wing centre sections. We've got these Bombay doors here. So I'm guessing this is going to be Bombay side walls or Bombay doors. The Bombay doors there. Um, I think the Bombay doors sort of slide up in like a like on a B24. And then we've got this um, Bombay roof, which is lovely, really nice. No ejector pins. No, they put the ejector pins on the back. Hey, so. Um, Obviously you've got the parts in the kit, but the instructions don't call out for them. So if you want to build a normal version, you just have to work it out for yourself. I think that's going to be Bombay doors open and that's going to be Bombay doors closed. Sorry, it has to be Bombay doors closed. So there we are. Uh, and then into this bag here, we've got lots of sprues in here. So put them to one side. We've got a clear parts there, I'll have a look at them in a minute. So here we've got the, this is going to be our turbines. Was it turbines or compressors? Because I, one of them was separate and one of them all came together. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this is the um, turbines, I think, from memory. Um, but basically, they're going to go into your intakes. You've got uh, this is part of the air brake system here, which is very nice. Air brake doors here for it closed. Then we've got that center spar there, which is going to go along the upper side of the fuselage. Uh, we've got those flaps there, which are very nice. It looks like sink marks in there, but I think it's just moulding lines where the plastic's flowed. And we've got detail on the inside as well. No ejector pin marks. We can have them dropped and they're going to look lovely. Um, got bulkhead there. Then we've got a panel there. I think that's part of the um, main gear, the front gear bay. And then we've got some undercarriage doors here with some lovely detail on the inside. You can see there. There's uh, no ejector pin marks. It really is a cut above this. And then we've got the main gear. Sidewalls there for the bay. Very, very lovely. Moving on to here, we've got our exhausts. Um, maybe they were our exhausts. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, then you've got the main gear. This, I keep calling it main gear. The nose gear sidewalls there. You've got the air brake in deployed position. We've got some more flaps there. Um, nose gear sidewalls. Main gear legs. Very, very fine. Very crisp molding on there. And then we've got the rudder there, which is a one piece. Uh, all very nice indeed. That looks like it's those pieces for the side of the intakes, I think. So yeah, let's have a look around that. Lovely detail on the air brake there and on the back side as well. See, very nice indeed. Lovely detail on the nose gear bay. Exhaust there. No ejector pin marks in them. As I say, you've got some more flaps there again, no ejector pin marks on them. It's all lovely. All lovely, lovely, lovely. Then we've got this common sprue that you also get in the Vulcan kit, but again, this is in the harder plastic. We've got our blue steel here, and then we've got the, the, the part that goes in the Bombay to, to allow the blue steel to fit in. You've got your alternate tail cone there. We've got our fins and everything for the blue steel. There's the intake for it. Um, and some other bits and pieces going on around here. So this isn't only the blue steel, this is actually parts for the airframe to make it correct for carrying the blue steel. So if you are building a standard bomber, be careful about these, these um, intakes and everything. Make sure you get the uh, get your um, research done. And I'll show you a book for that in a second. So this one here, this is the detailed bit. So we've got seats and everything going on. We've got a fold gear covers for the front wheels. We've got some more air intakes there, rudder pedals. Um, more seats, bits of undercarriage leg by the look of it, more seats, uh, the sidewalls there, got the uh, refueling probe, that looks like the windscreen wipers, very very nice indeed, you can see the detail on those seats, you know, have a look now because you're never going to see again, and you've got detail on those seats which you really aren't going to see again, unless you can see any of it through the door when it's open, I'm not sure, but um, there's mud guards there, got the control wheels there, there's some intakes down here on the bottom of the sprue. Very nice rudder pedals. Is that the instrument panel there? It looks like the instrument panel, but it's got no detail on it, so I don't know what's going on there. It's, uh, and there's that side panel there for the cockpit refueling probe. 
bits and pieces for the intakes there. Very nice indeed. And then last one sprue. This one here, this is going to be our our exhaust or intakes, whichever which is which. We've got our nose wheels there, and then we've got our main gear here. It looks very much like the Vulcan. And then we've got bomb gear, door actuators there, um, some antenna. So it looks like you've got separate pieces to it looks like we've got a separate wedge that goes in. So you can either have those or not. Um, I'm not sure if that's more splitter parts for the intakes, I think it is. Don't know what that is up there. That's the door. A couple of ejector pin marks on the inside of there, unfortunately. Um, some panels here. Not sure what that is. You've got your exhaust here. That's going to be the fairings on the back of those, um, what could be tanks on the wings. But you can see it's all nice and sharp and crisp and, and lovely. Got a ladder there, which is a little bit chunky, but hey, we sand that down a bit. Very nice indeed. Lovely. And then finally, we have our clear sprue, which I don't want to get out because I don't want it getting scratched. But we can see that in here we've got these wing tips. So you've got the whole wing tip there. And then you've got the tiny little bit here you're going to paint red or green. And then mask that off. And then when you spray it all the green or the white colour or whatever it is you're going to spray it, unmask the red and you'll have what looks like a clear light rather than a piece of plastic stuck in. So that's a really nice touch. You've got the bomb aimer's window there. We've got the side windows for the cockpit there. And then you've got the main, the main canopy there. And if I can get the plastic out of the way, you will see that you've got very little viewing area anyway. So you're not going to see a lot in there. Careful, that bit of sprue in there is going to be scratching it if you press it on it, so be careful. But um, as I say, if you've got bright red headrests or bright blue headrests or something, paint them because it'll stick out like a sore thumb when you look through those tiny little holes. So there we go, that's that. As far as reference material goes, I can thoroughly recommend this book here, although I believe it's quite expensive these days. This is on Target Special V-Bombers. You can see I paid £10 for it. Somebody told me they saw one for £100. Uh, Glenn Sands, Gary Madrick, Madrick and Peter Scott. It's a great little book. It covers the... The Vulcan, the Victor, and the Valiant, um, and it's got some fantastic drawn images, which will give you some ideas of your tail codes and stuff, and squadrons, and what you want to do. Um, but it's also got a lot of very nice photographs. You've got some nice close-up photographs. You can see here of some Vulcan front ends and everything. Um, got B1 and the B2 in here. You've got the Valiant at the start, and then afterwards, you've got in the back, you've got the Victor here, and uh, you can see here there's some different colour schemes for the victors and some great you know some nose arts and stuff from the Gulf War days and then we got the the camouflage versions so it's all uh, all very nice indeed from the development all the way up to the end of life and then in the back we've got a section all about XH558 some beautiful photographs of that one and then this one here we got all about blue steel there's some lovely pictures here of them being loaded and there's also some great pictures in here if you're into your converting models. It's a lovely Victor. I think the Victor is the prettiest out of all of them. Um, where have I seen those pictures? I have to show you them now that I've mentioned them. There are some great pictures in here of the, of the different loaders and stuff. Where have they gone? Here we go. So you can see all these um, modified trucks. Like that one there looks like what you get in the Airfix. Um, the set that's painted blue with the big long rack for carrying the wing on. Looks like that, so you could use that. And then you've got here, um, you've got a, an AEC or is it, um, yeah, an AEC Matador with the cab cut in half. With the blue steel on there. And then you've got that one here again, look. So it's all, uh, it's all nice stuff. It's all very interesting pictures to set up your little dioramas around. But um, very nice indeed. So there we go. So that is what I would recommend. The ISBN number, I keep getting asked for the ISBN number. There it is there. Okay, 9781904643227. So if you want to try and get yourself a copy. If there's enough demand, they might, they might do a reprint. But um, Glenn Sands has actually been in touch with me and thanked me for promoting his book. So um, 
there we go it's well worth having it was funny actually because when i started the vulcan somebody said the one book you need for that for that build dodge is this one and i thought i've got that book and i went to my bookshelf and there it was and i paid 10 pounds for it. i think i bought this from the xh558 foundation at fairford in 2012 i think it was 2012 so um when it was there with the b52 so well there we go right so that's it for that review that has been the airfix victor which is no longer made but is available on ebay if you if you want a new mortgage so i can't find my controller it's underneath a big pile of plastic but that's basically the kit there beautiful model go get yourself one if you can keep your eyes open for a second hand it shows worth having bye for now <laughs>